Good morning, folks. Huge news day, so you'll want to pay attention beyond the top story, even if the top story is something Earth hasn't seen since the time of magic. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. The last 24 hours on our star were quite calm. The big dark coronal hole patches are departing, but thinner dark plasma filament eruption threats began dominating the disk. None has released thus far, and neither has our sunspot. Solar flares will remain low if this mature active region doesn't learn some new tricks, growing, morphing, something. It's got 100% negative umbral magnetism. Deep core on the Doppler gram shows the magnificence of a silent leviathan. Meanwhile, back at Earth, overnight things were anything but calm. Earth's magnetic shield finally saw some solar wind it couldn't completely block, and the auroral electrojet lit up with solar plasma the last 10 hours. If you were outside somewhere near the north and had clear skies, that was northern lights weather. The cause was another super fast speed ramp in the solar wind stream. The coronal hole spiked to nearly 900 kilometers per second, and a level 2 geomagnetic storm was produced after a level 1 storm had occurred earlier in the day. However, it was between them that things got really interesting. Red lines were the earthquake alerts on the map yesterday, Blue arrow indicating an earth spot I'm watching for today. Now there were five areas on alert. That's what the global electric circuit was saying. And if you think that's too many, making them small matters. Here are all the areas not on alert in that map. Anyway, the relevant line was covering Central America as they had blood echoes and an earth spot hurricane auto overhead as a magnitude 7 earthquake briefly triggered tsunami warnings. There does not appear to be any casualties from this event, however. The earth spot was just striking the western coastlines of the continent at the time of the rumble. It had already killed a few people in Panama earlier in the week. For those who need more information, everything you'd want to know about the predictions, the facts, the metrics, it's all at quakewatch.net. Clicking the updates, we come to a document where our first year's results are on the first page. But then scrolling down, we come to year two of earthquake forecasting and pay attention. Folks, we don't care about anything lower than magnitude 6. That's when they get dangerous. And unlike last year where the alerts could go 3, 5, up to 7 days, now we've made it much harder on ourselves. If a quake area isn't on alert in the very last map posted, it's a miss. Doesn't matter if it had been on high alert for 3 or 4 days before that. We only have about 24 hours for a window, no more, and again, it must be on the most recent map. Five hits, no misses in year two, and indeed Earth's last seven earthquakes, magnitude six or higher, were hits within this system. We're not done yet. New information on ExoMars lander crash indicates it believed it had touched down more than three kilometers up. It turned off its stabilizers, it detached its parachute, and it hit Mars at hundreds of miles per hour and was destroyed. Next, we're coming to Italy where torrential rainfall near Genoa and Turin has caused major flash floods in the region. Rivers broke their banks in multiple locations, and the cleanup begins now. It's interesting that just earlier this week, the Italian government warned of major flood risks due to climate change. Now we're down under where extreme winds and a thunderstorm caused dozens of pollen-split-driven asthma hospitalizations. Few people actually died from the event. Next, we're in Japan, where they hadn't seen November snow in more than half a century. This event is about 40 days earlier than the region usually sees any relevant snowfall. Wind map transitions are lagging a bit this morning, but we can still eye our top alerts. Rain will continue from this Philippine typhoon the next few hours, but it does appear to be a passing threat now. Over in the United States, I am watching that earth spot heading for the west coast. If it wraps around, we should see a moderate alert for the fault line. Italy, don't look to the west, but there's more coming your way. That system is pulling from both the Atlantic and the Mediterranean for its energy and water vapor. And last but not least, Earth spot taking on New Zealand. Convergence line overhead now. Hope all is well, Kiwis. Folks, we're compiling the beta survey responses, getting ready to send out one last reminder email to the Kickstarter founders. And then the Apple or Android app you selected will be delivered to you the same way the survey was. So that means you'll need to open it on your device and not your computer. I will be giving more details when it's time. Just wanted to put that on your radar. Also, those VIP tickets indeed were gone within just a few hours. Still lots of tickets left for general admission observing the Frontier 2017. Remember, general admission still gets you every presentation. 
breakfast both days, the speaker hangouts, including the Saturday night gathering. As I mentioned, the wind map transitions are lagging today, so we've just got the shots of our star to close. It's 3.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.